this is a, a tract from a pregnant cow, um, probably about 60 days or so into, into the pregnancy, 60, 60 days or so after fertilization. And uh, you can see that one of the horns is quite a bit more swollen than the other. Uh, the fetus, I can palpate through the wall of the uterus and I can feel the fetus in here. It's about the size of a mouse, uh, you know, maybe two and a half, three inches long or so. And that's about what you'd expect around 60 days of gestation. Um, when we look at the ovaries, what structure would you expect to be on the ovary in a pregnant animal? hopefully they would say progesterone coming from the structure of the corpus luteum. Okay, you need to have progesterone to support the pregnancy and so uh, there should be a corpus luteum on this ovary. Now as the pregnancy progresses, uh, tissue will build up over uh, the corpus luteum and so they're not always easy to feel or see but if we cut through this ovary you'll see it very clearly. Okay, see that big healthy yellow tissue that's actively secreting progesterone and supporting the pregnancy. And you would expect the corpus luteum to be on the same side as uh, the fetus because think about how that fetus formed. Okay, if it resides in this horn, then it must have been ovulated or must have been fertilized in this oviduct, which means it was ovulated from this ovary. So we're typically gonna find the corpus luteum and the fetus on the same side, okay? So let's look inside and see what the pregnancy looks like at this point. What I'm trying to do is just cut through the uterine wall, but not through the fetal membranes. And that can be a little bit tricky. So I have, like I said, just, just cut through the uterine wall to expose the outermost fetal membrane. That's called the chorioallantoic membrane. And everywhere where it made contact with a caruncle on the inside surface, it formed a cotyledon. And there is a cotyledon, okay, right there. So that cotyledon has a bunch of finger-like projections on it that have embedded in that caruncle that was on the inside of the surface of the uterus, okay? And so we're going to dislodge those, those connections, separate. I, mean, I think you can see the finger-like projections being pulled away out of the, out of the caruncle there, okay? So we'll, we'll go ahead and, and uh, open this up some more. And try and get this fetal membrane system out intact.
that's that's one side fairly fairly well done I'm just gonna have to I know it's a little little slow and and tedious but you gotta got to kind of approach it carefully if you want to get everything out intact. Take the bull by the horns. Or the, or the uterus by the horns. Well, <laughs> we'll see what kind of calf. <laughs> I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, I guess if if you're gonna say that, yeah. th this is, these are the only horns she's got. <laughs> well, that's not true either. They can. Most breeds of females will have horns too. Let's see. I'm gonna. come up here and try and dislodge it as much as I can from this side too. Oh, so that forms up on the other side as well? Yeah, yeah, the fetal membranes will move and, and penetrate. It's shared structure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I mean, it, it, it's shared to such an extent that when there are twins, um, the, the two fetal membrane systems will, will uh, fuse at the tips and you get uh, transfer of, of blood from one fetus to the other. And uh, you know, that's why heifer calf born twin to a bull ends up being a free martin. Uh, she's, she's an intersex and she won't breed because the, the uh, the uh, male hormones in that developing bull fetus will uh, masculinize her uh, to a limited extent. She still appears externally like a female, but internally uh, you prevent the reproductive tract from forming properly. So it's a, it's a pretty common thing when you have you know, the twins and cattle, you, the, the, you know, especially the inter, uh, well, when you have the two different sexes, uh, what is it, 90% or more of the females are uh, infertile. So, I think what you can see here now very clearly is how well developed those caruncles have become and they've gotten much larger as the uterus has expanded and so on to accommodate the pregnancy. Yep. And, and then you can see all of the points where cotyledons formed on the inside surface or on the outer surface of the chorioallantoic membrane. Um, that's about as nice as pictures as I've ever seen. <laughs> Not to be bragging on myself, but <laughs> Hugo, what do you think? That's a pretty good, yeah, like pretty good set. Right? There's no no bloodiness to the fluids, and 
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what you what you see here too, I think very nicely is that there really are two sets of fetal membranes. The outer one is the chorioallantoic membrane that uh, actually makes contact with the uterine surface. But you can see another membrane system, an, a second sac inside here. Can you see the margin on that? And then the margin there of this, this sort of a sac within a sac. Uh, okay. Um, that's the amnion. This, this membrane uh, system, and so the fluid in there is amnionic fluid. And, uh, and that's what the fetus is actually suspended in. So uh, it's a very effective shock absorbing kind of a mechanism to have uh, an outer fluid filled cavity, then like with another one inside it and the fetus suspended inside that. Um, very, very effective uh, uh, protection for the, for the fetus from any kind of, kind of shock. So I'm just going to open up. There the. Well, there goes the amniotic fluid. And there's the fetus. It's actually a little bit bigger than I thought when I first palpated. I think we're probably more like on the 70, uh, 70 day or so range. And at this point, you should be able to tell what sex it is. And let's see if I can kind of get it to, to, to stay open. Can you? guys, can you see that? All right. And so that, that is the scrotum right there. Testicles haven't descended into the scrotum yet, so it's not really very large. And then this is the penis. So we have a bull calf.